Hey everyone, and welcome back to Flutter from Scratch. In this episode, we're going to look at how a Flutter project is structured. If you're coming from any other sort of development background, like native Android or iOS, this is really important. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at the app that we're going to make together. It's a pretty simple slideshow app, but it'll be good to get started with Flutter. Then we'll have a look at how a Flutter project is structured on the file system. Before finally seeing how widgets are laid out in the Flutter's UI system. If you haven't already done so, now would be a really good time to clone the sample project. Again, you can find the link for this project in the video description. You might be there thinking to yourself, hang on a second, this is called Flutter from scratch. So why are we using a pre-built solution like this? The reason's pretty simple. To understand the nuances of Flutter, you really need to see a minimum viable product. I'm sure you've already seen a ton of Hello World tutorials, so let's do something a little bit more advanced than that. This is the app that we'll be looking at together. It's called Sonda. Essentially, once the user clicks a button, they have a slideshow of random pictures. They can also tap on an about icon to read about the app and to read about the licenses as well. It's pretty simple, but it's a really good place to start to understand Flutter and also to understand the block pattern. So after opening up that Sonda project in Android Studio, straight away on the left, we can see some folders. Of course, Flutter being a cross-platform library, we have here the Android and the iOS folders for those respective platforms. Of course, we also have the Assets folder, which is where things like pictures for your app should go. We also have our lib directory, which is where most of our application will live. As well as our test directory for our tests, and the web folder, in case we want to target the web. Let's go ahead and see how a Flutter app gets started. It starts in the main.dart file. And as you can see, there's quite a bit going on here. In fact, if you come from other languages or frameworks, this might look a little bit overwhelming. So for now, let's just focus on this main function. It sets up the block supervisor, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later, and then it just has a call to run app. Run app just accepts a widget as its parameter. And the widget is here. As you can see, they're highlighted. It's just called my app because that's what we get by default and it extends of type stateless widget. And again, we'll talk about these widgets a little bit later on. So the first thing it does is it overrides the build function for the stateless widget. It does this by using this attribute called override. Widgets are central to how your application goes together. In fact, they're so important that on the Flutter website, the very first point underneath development and user interface is the introduction to widgets. The website gives this description. It says that widgets describe what their views should look like given their current configuration and state. When a widget state changes, the widget rebuilds its description, which the framework diffs against the previous description in order to determine the minimal changes needed in the underlying render tree to transition from one state to the next. And that's really well and good, but when I first read that, I still had no idea what a widget did after reading that. And in reality, I think a simpler way of saying it is that everything that you have in your Flutter app will be built from a widget. Some widgets can have children, like columns or rows, whereas other widgets will just do simple things, like display text. A widget can be at the end of your widget tree, as it were, simply displaying text or a picture, or it can be at the very top, as a topmost parent of your application, like it is at this case, in the root of our application. This widget here has some configuration options. It accepts a parameter for the title. It also accepts a theme, which is as simple as just the color blue. This widget also accepts the parameter of home. So, because it's the very top level of our app, we want to define what should be the top level of our app. And here we have initially this multi-block provider. That's because this app is architected using the block pattern. 
The block pattern is a topic in itself, and it's something we'll cover a little bit later on. But the main point here is that directly beneath that widget, we have our child widget here, which is the slideshow page. If you've come from another mobile development framework, like Xamarin for instance, the easy way to remember this is that blocks are a little bit like view models. They handle all the business logic for the view that you have showing at that point in time. But for reasons I'll show later, they're actually a lot more powerful. For now though, the important thing is, is that we have our slideshow page, which is a visual representation of what to show on the screen, and into this slideshow page, we are injecting our slideshow block. So again, our block controls all the business logic for the page. So now let's have a look at what is shown on the slideshow page. I'll just command click or control click on the page widget. Doing so navigates me to that exact page. And now we're on this page, what do we have? Do we have like a weird page view or some sort of control that we nest all these things in? Well no, we just have another widget. So we can see that because our child here was a widget, and now this is just another widget, we start to get an idea of how the visual tree in Flutter is composed strictly out of widgets. In this case, we have a stateful widget, which means that our widget has to maintain a state which might be the contents of a text box, for instance. Some widgets will be stateful, whereas some widgets will be stateless. It's okay to have a stateless widget and then have a stateful widget underneath it. It doesn't need to be a pure stateful widget the whole way down, for instance. As we can see here, we have a call to create the state of our widget, which is down here. And in here, it initializes the state. So if, you had, if we had any setup to do, like pre-filling text boxes uh, or anything like that, that would be the area we would actually do it. And then, because it's a widget, is we build that widget. So we tell Flutter what we actually want to draw on the page or on the UI. Of course, there's more to application development than just drawing things to a screen. We need to make our app react to the user interacting with it. And that's what we'll cover in the next episode. Thanks for taking the time to join me on the first part of this Flutter from Scratch episode. In our next episode, we'll be having a look at how we make our app interactive. I look forward to seeing you then.